from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. <laughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. We have a conversation on the air about the writer's strike and specifically about uh, what people are doing now that there's uh, no new TV shows on, save the game shows, the reality shows, but scripted shows, fiction, drama, comedy, whatever. Most of that is pretty much gone off the air. And even the uh, talk shows that deal in comedy have no writers, and we all have to pretty much agree that the quality of these shows is way lower than what uh, you would normally get. And one of the things I uh, asked on the air, I said, why do you think the networks don't hire replacement writers? There's a variety of reasons why they don't, but I think the number one reason is because the guys who don't have jobs as writers generally stink. You see, I believe that everybody is getting exactly what they deserve. I love hearing people complain about their jobs. They pay me crap. I can't believe how little this place pays. They're so stingy. No, they're not. They're paying you exactly what you're worth, not one penny more or less. Think about it. Not one penny more or less. You are getting exactly what you deserve. I mean, really. I'm dead serious. Think about it for a second. There you are. Your boss is a jerk and the company is cheap and, you know, you need more money. I love that excuse. People say they need more money. Hey, I've got kids. Hey, I've got insurance to pay for. Hey, I've got a mortgage payment to make. Hey, go back to school. Hey, get some skills, you moron. Hey, quit your job and go work someplace where they pay more. Last year, I left a job at a radio network and went to CBS, which pays me 50% more than I was making before. That's it. If you don't like where you're working, go somewhere else. Make more money. It's so frustrating to people. They, they can't figure out why they're not making more. And they blame it on everything. The boss, their coworkers, the company, the industry, the economy. You're getting exactly what you're worth. It's a free market, and you're getting exactly what you are worth. That's what a free market is all about. I just got into a debate with the people who sold me their house up in Santa Barbara County. I just bought a 20-acre property. And um, in the process of the negotiations, it looked like negotiations were going to break down. They sent me a letter telling me that I didn't know what I was talking about. And they said, uh, in another market, this house's uh, listed price would be much higher. Like they were doing me a favor, selling it to me for whatever price they're offering to sell it to me for. And I wrote back and I said, that quote is very interesting. In another market, this house would be worth much more than the listed price. <laughs> You're absolutely right. This is true. But we're not in another market. We're in this market. I told them if I wanted to buy a house for more, I would have bought a house in 2002 or 2003 or 2004 or 2005. But guess what? It's 2008. 
and you waited too long to sell your house. Your house isn't worth what your realtor says it's worth. It's not worth what you think it's worth. It's worth what real people are willing to pay today. Today. And that's what you're worth. You're not worth a penny more than people are willing to pay you. Guess what? If you're not being paid enough, you could withhold your services. You could go back to school. You could quit. You could ask for a raise, and if you don't get a raise, you could go somewhere else. But if you don't, whose fault is it that you make as little as you do? In this business, as I made my way up the ladder, I had jobs for 18 months. One job I had for seven weeks. That was a job where I made $160 a week. Wasn't enough. I got a raise to 300 at my next job. Um, I stayed at that job until I was making almost 600 a week. Then I moved to a job that paid $1,000 a week. If you're worth more, somebody will pay you more. And what happens in your personal life is not the business of your company. People you work for, none of their business. I mean, the fact that you need more money is not your company's problem. You had a baby, so you need more money. You can't afford health insurance. Whose fault is that? It's yours. I hear people complaining. You see a lot of these stories on TV because we're in an election year, and you see these people complaining that they can't pay their bills. They can't make their mortgage payments. They need help. No, you don't need help. You need to stop being a lazy bastard. You need to go back, get more training. You can go back to trade school, community college. You need to go back to college. You need to get a graduate degree. You need to do what it takes to make yourself more valuable so you can make more money. That's how it's done. That is how it's done. That is how it's done. Stop complaining about how much money you make. You're getting what you deserve, aren't you? Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom Likas. Like Do you teach the guys no foreplay? Well, put it this way I tell the guys your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh my goodness, Tom, this is horrible. This is not romantic. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. I want 800 800 tom So come on, you're getting paid exactly what you're worth. I'm not just saying that to make you pissed off. I'm saying that to get you motivated because if you really think you're not getting paid enough, it's time to quit. Or it's time to get more training or it's time to moonlight or something. Jody on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Great. Well, I just got off of work, and I was catching the end of what you were saying about uh, getting paid what you're worth. And this has been, like, an ongoing issue with me for, like, the past six months. I work for a title company, and the housing market sucks right now. And before it started going down like it has, um, I would make my base salary plus overtime and extra work that we would get. And, you know, I was fine, and I didn't ask for a raise because I was making all this extra money. And so the housing market goes down, the overtime gets cut, all the extra work gets cut, and so now I'm down to my base salary, and I decide to ask for a raise because I think I'm worth more than what they're paying me, and she tells me the company's not making money, and she can't give me a raise, so I waited three months. I asked again, and she said the same thing, and I just don't know. I mean, I, I love my job. I really like what I do, but... um. There's no work in the field that I'm in, and I don't know what to do, and that's why I'm calling you. Well, I mean, look, let's face it. There's not as much demand for your services anymore. Yeah, that's true. So why would anyone pay you more? Well, because I'm good at what I do. Yeah, but if there's a surplus of people who do it. They don't have to pay a premium to get you. You could certainly test the market by applying for other jobs and seeing if someone will pay you more. Yeah, I guess but I could do that. My understanding about the mortgage industry is more people are getting laid off than hired. Oh, yeah. I've been there only two years, and I, I survived the layoffs. 
you know, so that right there tells me that I'm, you know, worth more than the people that were there 10 years that got laid off, you know. Right, but but the fact is you're worth what you're getting. You're not worth yeah, more than what you're getting. And they were probably making more money, and that's probably why they got laid off, and I'm doing all the work. It would be my money. guess that if you continue to pressure them for a raise, they'll dump you too. Yeah, and you know what? That would kind of be better for me than I could collect unemployment while I look for a job because I, I commute, and so my whole day is spent driving and at work. And, Wait a minute. You know, that can't be true. I mean, you can't be better off on unemployment than working. Well, I mean, just to look for a job. Like, I, right now, I don't have time to look for a job. I can't, you know, miss work for an interview. Or you What, know, do, you, what I, do you work, 100 miles from home? Um, about 50. 50 really? Yeah. Wow. Why is that? Well, because I live in a small town, and I couldn't make any money there, so I decided to Well, maybe move. you needed to move. Well, that's, yeah, that's not an option, really. Why not? Well, because my, I co-parent and my kids, it, my kids' lives are where we live. Um, have two Indian kids, and they're real involved in their reservation activities, and I couldn't really take them away from that. Are, but, are, are you an Indian? Or did you adopt no. these kids? No, their they're dad's Indian. I see. Yeah. So you had kids, were you married? No, I'm. I'm your. I wish I would listen to you. Uh, however long ago you've been on the air. So you put I, yourself in the soup, is what you did. Oh yeah, I'm. A, I'm your total loser situation. But you know, I finally got my head out of my rear end and decided, you know, it's time. So you know, I went from welfare to making forty thousand a year, which isn't bad for a first step. But now I'm just stuck, and I don't know what to do. You know. Well, that that's what you make. You can uh, go out there and tune up your resume. You can go out there and try to uh, branch out into related fields like banking. Yeah. But keep in mind, you know, we're, everyone's saying in 2008 we're going into a recession. Yeah. Yeah, I've been hearing that. And so it. people who have jobs are lucky to have them. And rather than complaining, uh, people ought to find ways to make themselves more valuable to their current employers. Yeah. Well, see, with all the layoffs, like, I went from doing one job to doing five different jobs. So, you know, they, they know I'm valuable because there's only two of us there that can do everything that that is involved in, you know, the job. Right, but never assume that you've done everything you can do. By the way, oh, yeah. making yourself more valuable by taking more courses or getting more degrees or whatever makes you more valuable to yourself as well. Yeah, that's true. So don't be lazy. Oh, no, that's that's not the thing. It's just I, I don't know where to start, pretty much. Well, yeah. community college is always a good place to look. Well, I, I have an associate's degree. All right, so then. That, that's no good, you know. Then you so. need to find out what you can transfer over to a major university, uh, or at least a uh, an accredited university, and start going there. Yeah. And well, that means you have to work harder. Oh, that's fine. I don't mind. I mean, I was working 15, 16-hour days when the market was booming. You know? All right, so, so now you have more time to do it, so now's the yeah. time. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Tom, can you take me out with the bomb rip? There you go, Jody. <coughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. John. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to let you know, you know, sometimes college is good, but uh, when the, skull, the color of your skin is the wrong color, doesn't matter. You know, I have MBA. Uh, just turned 30. What, and, is your uh, MBA, what is your MBA in? Uh, it's MBA in Human Resources Management. May I ask why you got a master's in that? Because I was... Um, Already in human resources, so I decided let's go ahead and make it not just an MBA, but an MBA in HR. Because it doesn't strike me as the kind of job with big earning potential. Well, uh, even at the yeah, top you know, of the I, top, I admit maybe I didn't do enough research because you know, number one, there's not a lot of men in, in human resources, and then, and then also you know, you know, African American men there definitely isn't, isn't any. So. I go out here. You know, I, hey, I, let me I tell you something. Job. I've met a lot of African American women who do that job. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because companies always try to show how diverse they are, and the first place they do it is in the human resources department. 
Yeah. But that's one of the reasons I perceive it to be a low-paying gig. Yeah, uh, it, it depends on, on the company. Uh, but, you know, when you get one of those uh, tier management jobs, you're doing pretty good for yourself. But uh, for someone like me, I never get there. It's, it's been but, but I don't think that's true. I mean, there are black CEOs. The guy who runs American Express is black. I mean, the, the guy who runs Time Warner is black. I mean, there's there's a list of, of black CEOs. Uh, Bob Johnson owns the Charlotte Bobcats. The guy's a billionaire. Okay. So okay. so the thing is, you shot low. Oh, so so, oh, so you're telling me that with the NBA, I should just go ahead to the top. Just and I'm telling you that you should have got an NBA and something that pays big. Oh, I see, I see, okay. That's what I'm okay. saying to you. Yeah. I'm saying that I I see more potential for you than you see in yourself. Uh -huh. You shot, when I say you shot low, what I mean is you should have gotten an MBA and become a CEO. You, you should have gotten business administration or something bigger. Because yeah. I think the salaries in human resources are limited. That was the person, you know, when I was a kid, they called that the personnel department. Yeah, right. This was not something you'd get a master's degree in. <laughs> That's like getting a master's degree and being a receptionist. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. you got to you got to own it. I believe in you. I believe in every individual. Okay, and I believe that most people underestimate their own abilities way more than their boss does. Right. Right. So I mean, so so so. What should I do, though? I mean, should I start all over, or I don't know uh, if you have to start all over, but maybe you need another degree in an area that has more lucrative potential, and you need to do a little research on what that is, and you need to do a little gut check and figure out what you'd like to do. Would you like to be a CEO? Would you like to be an executive vice president? Would you like to be a vice president of accounting or vice president of something where people make real money? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, then yeah. you need to figure out what that is you want to be and take a course in that. But before you take, before you go for another degree, because you know how hard it is to get a degree like that, you need to do research and find out how much money people make in the real world, not how much you think they should be getting, how much they actually do get. Uh -huh. And then that needs to be your area of expertise. Okay. Believe me, I reinvented myself dozens of times during the course of my career. Uh -huh, I, yeah. I I did whatever sold. Gotcha, yeah. And that's what you need to do. Well, you know, I, I try my best, you know. But, I, uh, as, as, as that's pretty much what I've been doing, you know. Well, I, 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 I try to go into one field that doesn't work out, then I just, you know, I, I kind of switch. Hey, by the way, don't, don't sell yourself short. I mean, when you see... Oprah Winfrey gets her own television network. Um, oh, please. Shoot I mean, me now. Yeah, I know. Shoot <laughs> me now. But guess what? I mean, she's a person of color who went out there and found a market, yeah, of dopey broads. There's a lot of them in this country. And she worked it to the max. No one ever did it better than she did. Yeah. You need to find your place. You need to find your niche. And let me tell you something. If you're more valuable than the next guy, nobody will care what color you are. Uh, that's, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Let me assure you, okay? You know, all those years, let's just take steroids out of the equation. All those years Barry Bonds was playing, they didn't find a white guy to play left field. Right. Because he was the best at, at what he did. You need to be the best at what you do. Well, I, I keep at it. <laughs> do it. I will. All right, John, let me know how you make out. All right, thanks, Tom. Okay. You know, I, I, I hear people, they get into that little box, you know, they well, color my skin, you know. Yeah, I, look, I know there's racism, and I know there's people who are jerks. I know. But uh, I grew up in a neighborhood of people of color. I grew up in the South Bronx, and let me tell you something. Uh, yes, there are people who end up as uh, drug addicts and prostitutes and uh, you name it. Worse, they end up in prison. There are also people who end up achieving amazing things, and it's all a matter of your own perception of yourself. I mean, really, are they looking for a white woman to replace Oprah Winfrey, please? Are the Lakers looking for a white guy to replace Kobe Bryant? <laughs> Absolutely not. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I said it. You are getting exactly what you are worth.
Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up? Not much. Well, uh, I was calling in because uh, what you said touched me, the people getting paid what they're worth. I'm a, I'm a physician, and uh, you know, I spent 13 years after high school, you know, getting the training and, you know, working the 24, 48, 72-hour shifts, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, all that time, you know, my friends and other people were living it up and partying and, you know, et cetera. Now that I'm making a lot of money, you know, a lot of people are saying, whoa, you don't deserve that. You know, we could do that. Oh, I love, I, here's the one I love. You're lucky. Yes, you're lucky. You're I lucky. So I hear that one all the time. You're lucky. Uh-huh. And it, it, it drives me crazy. You know, it's like. Well, you know, if you did what I did, then you would be paid what I pay, you know, would get paid. So, I don't know. It's it, it's frustrating. Well, it's frustrating. Well, you gotta be, you know, I, it's not frustrating because when you put your head down on a pillow with $100 bills stuffed inside, it, it, I, I imagine it relieves the tension somewhat. Yeah, yeah. This is true. This is true. Yeah. Oh, I have one other thing. and This was something that uh, came up on a show a while back. Um, you were talking about being a slacker and playing video games and stuff. And uh, I'm a big Xbox fan, and uh, there was a study done uh, probably about a year or so ago where they looked at uh, laparoscopic surgeons. These are surgeons that work with little tools. Uh, and they found that the ones that spent a certain amount of time playing video games actually had a higher success rate in their surgery. I'm sure that's true, but the bottom line is how many Xbox players try to become laparoscopic surgeons? Many of them just become the biggest weed smoker in their zip code. This is true. It's probably the most. But I have to tell you, I know a lot of laparoscopic surgeons, and uh, I'd be playing Xbox with them quite a bit. So it, it, there's, there's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So anyway, can you blow me up? You, I, I'll blow you up any time. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Lacey on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Lacey. Okay, check this out. Today, I asked my boss for a meeting on Monday so I could talk to him about I'm so much worth more than what he's paying me, but I'm going to do it after I go to school. And then when I jumped in my car to go home, you just were speaking to me at 5 o'clock, and I just want to say thank you because you've motivated me to do better for myself. I've been quitting my job in my mind for the last year, but I've never quit, and I keep going, and I'm worth more, but I'm going to make it so that I'm worth more. And I just want to say thank you. Can you blow me up Kobe style? Here you go, Lacey. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. You get paid exactly what you're worth, right? Chad on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, what's up? Not much. Hey, um, you were talking about the job you had uh, for $160 a week. Was that like an internship, or was that really what you were getting paid? It was a job back when that was still legal to pay someone $160 a week. Oh, okay. So was, was that while you were in radio, or, or were, did you That was in radio. Okay. And then you said you had one for like 300 a week, then 600 then 1000 a week. How old were you when you were hitting the 1000 mark? I was 28. 28? 28. Oh, that's not bad. I got you beat, Tom. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> but um, listen, I got one more question. My younger brother, he's in the same business as me. We're in the hospitality business. And um, he wants to pick up everything he's put into this business and leave to a whole other career. And you're talking about reinventing yourself. I've been telling him that's, that's kind of stupid um, because you waste all that time you put into in this business. And I think he's going to regret doing it and come back to it later and then having missed all that time that he took off from it. What do you think about that? Well, uh, you know, again, uh, <laughs> all I can say is that uh, I find that most people uh, – and, and, and let me ask you a question. How old are you, Chet? You're 25? Yeah. I, I find that most people underestimate their own abilities, undersell themselves to their employers – they're underprepared for their jobs. 
Uh, they don't. They don't see their own potential. Yeah. And I think that's a common problem. But he went from like being a security guard at House of Blues, to right? Telling himself he can manage a restaurant, right? Got his resume together and is managing a restaurant. But see now. that proves that, that. But that proves my point. That's what I'm trying to say to you. That proves my point. He, he could have been doing better. And he went out and sold somebody on believing that. And that's why he's making more money and doing better now. Yeah. And by the way, I did that all along. You know, early in my career, I'll be honest, I lied about my experience. I Or I misrepresented my experience in my early jobs. That's what a resume is. It's as good as you can bull ass on your resume. Right. It's as good a job you're going to get. And, and by the way, you're competing with other people who are doing the exact same thing. I'm not saying to put real obvious lies that uh, are going to be easy to check. But uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, I went out and I sold myself to people. That's how I did it. Until right, right, I was right. in the... And by the way, if you sell yourself and you get a job that's way above anything you've done before, you better produce. Yeah, exactly. Well, well you'll I get heaved. So I can produce. Mm-hmm. But, um, all right. Well, that answers some of it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. I mean, he, the, the, his, his, he did the exact right thing. All right. He's working as a security guard, and he tells the restaurant, I can manage a restaurant. And he, he said that uh, not only because he was trying to sell the guy, he believed he could do it. And now he does it. And I think sometimes you need to step out and do those things. I think most people, people like you listening to me right now, uh, most people are saying, oh, I, could, I, could, I can't manage a restaurant. I can't, I can't be the, the, the vice president of uh, the accounting for this company. I couldn't be the president of the company. You sell yourself short. And that's why you make as little as you do. Tom. Tom. Like us. 1-800-5800-TOM. Guys look at sex the way we look at pizza. There's pizza for square pizza, round pizza. There's pizza from uh, the old-fashioned mom-and-pop store. There's pizza from Pizza Hut. The way you guys look at pizza is there's no bad pizza. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. All it takes is me coming on the air saying you get paid exactly what you're worth, and then I get this reaction. Lori on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. I got a, I got a question for you here. Yeah. I'm listening to uh, to what you're saying about about basically you, you, you want to set your goals, sell yourself, do what you got to do, get where you want to be, and then that's how you're going to succeed. This is kind of what I'm getting. Well, I mean, you, you, there's more to it than that. You have to make yourself valuable. Right. It, it, it is not just uh, you know, this idea that you apply for a job and then you wait for the company to respond is ridiculous. You have to be the best at what you do. Yes, exactly. The best. Does this, okay. So that said, people who don't have that attitude are losers who never make any money and constantly complain their whole lives about how little they make. Yeah, I laugh at them. Okay, would you? Would you? Okay, would you work for someone you couldn't stand if the money was there, and if if it was in your direct line to success? It would depend on whether I could use that as a stepping stone to something better. I will be honest with you. Uh, I took a job at a radio station before I came to Los Angeles. I was working in Miami, and I took a job in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, the, to say that the owner of the radio station and I didn't get along would be an understatement. This guy is notorious. And by the way, Danny Bonaducci worked for the same guy after I did. He'll tell you all about this guy, okay? Nobody liked working for him. But he paid me a lot of money. And Phoenix was a lot closer to L.A. than Miami. So for the three years I worked at that radio station and, and was miserable working for him, it was the stepping stone I needed to get the biggest job of my life. So I did it. But I always knew it was temporary. I never planned on staying more than a couple of years. I guess that's it. You know, 
you, in your mind, you're just like, okay, just deal with it, deal with it, deal with it. Deal and with it because it's a limited time off or deal with it because it's a stepping stone. Deal with it because right. I'm jumping to a much bigger lily pad from here. Yeah. And then do it. Yeah, that's my. That's what I'm having a conflict with right now. Uh, it was someone that I used to work for, and the potential to make money was much bigger. And I just, just personally, just, I just, oh man, just to think to go back is like I, I can't even think about it. But I know in my heart that if I do that, that's going to be what I need to do in order to get where I want to be, and that sucks. But I think, I think that's what I got to do. Well. And then you've got to have a game plan for what happens after that. After that, right. 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 Yeah. Because what most okay. people do is they just they take a job and then they just kind of settle in. They, they, uh, they just prepare to be there indefinitely. Yeah. And that's why they get into this complaining mode. My boss is a jerk. I don't get paid enough. This company is a piece of crap. Who, who put a gun to your head and made you work for your boss? That's true. Yeah. All right, Tom. I just wanted to get your input on that. Thanks for the, the show. You guys always have really good topics going on. I'm new to you, but uh, it's always something to pick into on my way home from work. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for that, Lori. Here's Josh on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing, man? Doing Okay. I just wanted to say, man, I just recently moved to California, and I just started listening to your show about a month ago. I love what you say, man. I, I think you say a lot of things that people need to hear. Um, what I was calling about is I'm a, I'm a changed man listening to what you talked about because my whole life I've been wanting to be a producer and uh, production and, and music and, and, like, production and sound for film and things like that. And I spent my whole life going after it. I, uh, I went to college for production. I got a, a degree in uh, sound engineering, and I uh, got a bachelor's in entertainment business from a very accredited school. And I moved out to California, and I just tried my, my hardest just to, to get into just your basic audio video jobs, thinking I would need to move up in the industry. But my whole life, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs that I've made for different people that everybody say are great, but I just have always felt like I, I wasn't good enough to even try to get one of those positions because I didn't think that with what I was working with, I could I could really get there. And I've never gotten negative criticism, but I just felt like I was I was selling myself short. And what you were saying right there made me, made me realize that I really need to go out and I really need to get what I came to get, like what I went to school for and what I, what I spent my life trying to do. And I felt like I'm a changed man because of you, and I'm going to go out there and try my hardest. Good for you. And, I mean, I really just, I had to get that off my chest. I was sitting in my car just listening to what you were saying. Like, this is this is fate. I have to call right now because this means so much to me. And, and I, I really hope that someday I'm paid when I think that I'm worth because I know I'm worth more than what I'm getting paid right now. Well, if you are, then you'll prove it. Yeah, I will do it. I'll definitely get back to you as soon as I'm doing that. Hey, can you, uh, can you take me out with a bong, hey, man? Here you go, Josh. It's Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Father? Doing okay, sir. All right. I'm the repo man, and I make about sixty, seventy-five thousand a year. Dropped out of school at sixteen, no degree. Think that's good or no? Or could well, I do more with my life? Well, yes, you can do more with your life. Uh, uh, it's a very risky job you have, and the reason you make as much money as you do is because you run the risk someone's going to blow your head off. But I love it, and that's the thing. I thought about being the police, because if you can't beat them, join them. Well, somebody might blow your head off there, too. You know, I don't know, Tom. I just, I think society looks down upon me, though, like, because I'm the repo man. Well, they dirty tow truck guy. Well, here's the here's the deal. A lot of people look down on you because they, they're, they're uh, losers and deadbeats who don't want to pay their bills. And they bought a car they couldn't afford. It's your job to go in there and get that car back for the person who sold it. Yes, sir. So I do it well, and I love, and that's the thing. I have a passion for it. I wake up and I love it. You love that work. Oh, more than it says it across my back, sir. 
have, have you seen on Spanish language TV there is a uh, there's a reality show uh, that follows people like you around repoing cars? Man, I've been trying. Everybody tells me I've heard about that so many times. It's in Spanish, but uh, you'll get the idea if you watch it. Uh, I got the idea. Get it and go. Yeah, well, there's like uh, three or four people to go around doing what you do in this show, and they follow them around, and they you see all the morons, and you know what happens when you try to take their cars. They start yelling oh, yeah. at you and threatening you, and uh, they take out weapons or whatever they do. They curse and scream and cry. Try to block your way out of the driveway or lock the car in the garage or whatever. Or drive it off the truck even. There but is go. that good money for a high school dropout, you think? Well, yeah, well, again, remember, it's good money, but you get it because you're taking a big risk. That's what people who don't have a full education have to do. They have to take big risks to make up the difference. But it's awesome, Tom. But how much does the police make a year on average? Yeah, but let me ask you a question, Matt. Think ahead. When you're 45, would you be doing that? By the time I'm 45, I do plan to have 10 trucks of my own on the road working for me. So All right. All right. Got, you know what I mean? I do got the goals for it. All right. So you got to be, you be then, then what now. you got to do, then what you got to do, you got to do some saving. You got to get your GED. You got to get yourself into a community college. You got to get yourself a degree in business administration at some point if you want to own a company like that. The business administration? Yes, sir. All right. Will you my, take me out with something nasty? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Art, what do we have that's really nasty? Uh, yeah, yeah, give him a fart. That's nasty. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's the stutter fart. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Caesar on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, hello, Dad. How you doing? Doing great. I, I have a I have a question for you, and uh, I'll give you a little background on it uh, because it has to do with me individually. About eight months ago, I went up to my employer and uh, I demanded a raise. Well, what I did was I went out to get another job. I put in my uh, my resignation. They wanted to keep me, so they beat the offer. I'm sure that's pretty standard, and that happens all the time. Now, I'm already I I, I think I can get more, and actually, I'm getting offers for more. Now, it's only been eight months since I last had a match beaten. So I probably won't get that offer again. Is it normal for people to go six, eight months and feel they need more or they, uh, well, feeling you need more is, uh, you know, I, I always say there's a difference between thinking and doing. Okay. If you feel you need more, you need to do something about it. I know I can get more elsewhere, but I'm, I'm just saying I've only I've only been at my job eight months before. May I ask why at 19 you're not in school? I I go to school at night. I am uh, I am a systems engineer for actually I can't say exactly. I shouldn't say exactly, but I work for for the county. I'm a county contractor for IT, and I'm a systems engineer. That's my position. And you are going to school to get a real degree in this? Yes, I go to a Cal State. I go to Cal State Fullerton. Actually, I'm on my good. way now. That's good. I, I only take about six units a semester because I work full time, but uh, I'm looking to make as much money as I can at 19, 20, 21 while I'm going to school. Well, remember what you make, you're going to put plow back into your tuition and your books and, uh, you know, of course, that your living expenses. Chunk, that takes a big chunk of it. It does. It do well, you sound really ambitious, which I like. Thank you, Dad. Son, I'm proud. Thank you for that. Ben on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, I just wanted to totally agree with you in saying you got to make your move and get yourself in the door any way you can, especially now when they want everything to be done online. It's not even – you can't even get in the door and BS your way through anymore. you got to find a way to get in there and get that interview. And uh, there was a time when I just walked into the place, so I wanted a job. They said, oh, you got to fill out something online. I said, I've done that. I have an interview today with management. Like, oh, oh, let me get you right in. Let me get you right in. Went in there, BS my way through it. By the time I got in the door, they didn't even know what was going on. They were so functionally disorganized that uh, I was able to get in there, ace the interview, and I got the job. You blew them away. Good for you, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.